Hey everyone, this is Dan, and today we picked a topic that isn't discussed often. Why aren't you improving at Fortnite? If we take a look at the average player, they seem to hit a point where they believe they can't get better. I'm here to tell you, whoever sold you that was lying. Every pro player knows it. Improvement is a feat that everyone needs. We've compiled a video with the top five reasons you aren't getting better at Fortnite. So let's dive right in. Alright, first up, one mistake many of you might still be doing is not playing against good enough players. It's sad to say, but Arena has literally become the new pub matches. In order to really improve the game, you need to play against better players because how can you improve when you fight the same type of players over and over? If you're a casual player, you need to fight good players. If you're a good player, you need to fight pro players. Putting yourself against higher skilled enemies pushes yourself to the limits. The sheer shock and panic you'll experience are exactly what you need to get better. It's a scientific fact that the more you do something, the more you adapt to it. If you go about fighting the same baddies over and over, you won't get any better. It's very easy to get caught up in fun pub matches. Slaying bots and all can be very fun at times, but this isn't the way to get better, especially if you're looking to go competitive. Arena matches nowadays are very subpar when it comes to improving your gameplay due to most players W keying and you don't get stacked end game lobbies. Fortunately, there are a variety of Fortnite Customs discords which host competitive stacked lobbies that offer good practice for those who really want to take it to the next level. Ghost Bizzle once said in an interview, The only way I got good is because I played against the best of the best every day in stacked scrim lobbies. This tells us a lot about what we need to implement to get better. You want to be the best, you got to take out the best. Moving on to our next subject, we have tunnel visioning. One of the worst habits casuals and sometimes even pro players have is tunnel visioning. Now, I know this is just a buzzword at this point, but let me tell you, it's a very real thing. This very standardized form of pushing an enemy and disregarding everything else, whether it be surroundings, your loadout, and the material count, is the worst way to go. This type of gameplay is very destructive and almost always results in a negative outcome. The problem with tunnel visioning is that it punishes your other priorities and throws everything behind your back. In Fortnite, there are many instances where you won't be able to secure a kill, whether in a mid-game fight or an end-game scrim, so you need to know when to back away from the fight. Always going for the kill can have serious consequences. Let's give an example of an instance where this method is lethal and not recommended. You're in an end-game tournament lobby with high ground. You manage to catch a player off guard and get him low health. He is alone and has no teammate, but in order to drop down to pressure him, you have to leave the high ground to go for a wall replace. Now, as you proceed downward, two enemies decide to take shots at you, lasering you to 50 health. Another enemy jump pads above you and takes the high ground. So now what did you gain? The simple answer? Nothing. You left the high ground for an attempted one point and lost high ground and a bunch of your health. This instance is a perfect demonstration of us sometimes. We give up our great positioning for a potential one kill and loss of health or the game. We need to think clearly about whether or not we decide to focus on one enemy. So next time you want to push somebody, make sure it's a smart play. Check your loadout, materials, or positioning. Now, let's go over several instances where tunnel visioning is not only necessary, but a must. Sometimes it may be dangerous though. In duos or trios, it's very common for players to come across outnumbered fights, sometimes a 2v3 or a 2v1. In these instances, it's highly essential that you eliminate your opponents quickly because of the potential third partying. Another great instance would be if you're pitted in a 1v1 and you get your enemy to low health. This would be a great opportunity to tunnel vision because ideally, you want to prevent him from healing. The last instance is when you're low on materials or need some ammunition. Many times in late game rotates, we run dry on materials or ammo. This warrants some W key fashion and style. So the only instance when you should really be tunnel visioning is when a kill is absolutely necessary, such as when you need to secure a kill on a 2v1, or when you need materials or items desperately. Every situation should be gauged differently, but when you have a solid loadout, good positioning, you should not be tunnel visioning for a kill, especially when you can risk dying. The next and really big mistake is making plays based off an impulse. This is quite similar to tunnel visioning, except can apply to a broader range of actions. Sometimes we decide to go for a play that makes no sense at all, simply because we feel the urge to. I'm sure you've all made a foolish move and said afterwards, damn, I can't believe I did that. It's a mutual feeling, trust me, we can all relate. The question is how do we change or fix that, and it's really quite simple. We need to properly think things through before doing them. Instead of going for loot in a dangerous spot, how about not going for it? Instead of pushing for high ground when you don't have gliders or many materials, don't. What it all comes down to is making moves effectively and not based on impulsiveness. I can't name every situation you get into, but I'm hoping by now you guys get the point. It's very easy to get frustrated and angry over a death that shouldn't have happened. And yes, you're right, it shouldn't have happened. But the only reason why it did is that impulsive plays always result in negative consequences. If I down an enemy and decide to go for the materials even though the storm is rotating inwards and end up dying, that's purely my fault for making the wrong decision. Fortnite really comes down to decision making over mechanical skill. And that brings us to our next concept on how to effectively combat impulsiveness with decision making. 
One of the best ways to offset mechanical skill and the flashy building is with effective game sense. It's so much easier to get an advantageous angle on an unsuspecting enemy and laser him, rather than engage him in a full-fledged one-on-one build fight. I mean, everyone needs to know this in order to become the menacing pro player that you have the potential to be. You're going to have to make smart decisions. Here's a solid example of how Cease makes a smart move by dropping down and playing the Storm Circle. He doesn't win, but ends up getting a lot of kills in the process. Hey, dude, you guys play your life, play your life. Oh, I cracked him below. Cease, that's all you, dude. Yeah, yeah, play placement, Cease. Placement, okay. Only 10 people alive, dude. Easy placement. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Nice! Nice! No mats, no mats. Finish him, finish him under you. Nice. You're full HP. Nice! 50 mats, 50 mats, 50 uh, mats, 50 mats. 50 yeah, yeah. mats. Yeah, you gotta reload and go up. Tank storm, nice. tank storm. Alright. Probably dead. Whoever. Good game. We got second. Now, we aren't going to go as in-depth as we have on several other videos posted about this subject, but the main goal is to always take notice of your surroundings, weapon loadout, material count, and storm. If you use these four facets, you'll have no deal-making smarter decisions. Now, let's head over to our next topic. All right, the fourth topic is a combination of tilting and mentality. If you want a brief overview of tilting, check this out. That's okay. He's not fighting them. I can't stress enough how damaging this is to the psyche. All good players know when you get angry at any given moment, all of your next moves will be impulsive, rash, and made out of frustration and anger. Never in the history of Fortnite has a player ever won a tournament while angry. High-level gameplay requires skills, precision, and most important of all, a strong, focused mindset. Science proves that anger causes all types of stress-related emotional reactions that overcome a person, preventing him from performing optimally. So if you want to be effective, stay far away from anger. That's why every good player out there knows that getting frustrated and upset is not the way to go. Now, let's just talk about the mind for a second. It's a well-known fact that better players are the ones who believe that they can win. We see it all too often that players who started blaming everything around them when they die never end up progressing. When you tell yourself things like, I can't win, or I'm not getting any better, this very negatively affects your mind and overall take on what you're doing. A game like Fortnite, where RNG is very prevalent, seems to give many players excuses to buy into this so-called RNG factor. But if Fortnite were totally based off RNG, players like Bizzle, Saf, Stompy wouldn't get such consistent placement almost all the time. You can tweak RNG to your advantage, situational and overall outcome, by carefully studying out loot routes, drops terrain, and the liking. As I mentioned before, we saw several big names qualify again and again for the World Cup. So what RNG doesn't exist for them? Or they have so-called streamer loot? So we see from here that mentality is a very strong aspect when it comes to Fortnite, and getting frustrated and upset really helps ruin your game and maybe even your day. So next time you die, even if the reason warrants anger, don't get upset and say to yourself, it's just a game. So make sure you have a strong mentality and a winner's mindset, and don't tilt over little things. Our last and final topic for today is something extremely big that doesn't seem to get enough coverage, taking 50-50s. This has two aspects. One of them is going for super risky plays such as landing with an enemy in the same room. The second is taking a 50-50 bloom fighter trade shot. Many times, players will get so caught up with getting a certain landing spot that they forget the fact that they need to win. When you see a chest on the roof and an enemy is just beside you, going for that chest is a great way to die. If you think about the chance of you getting that chest or loot without taking any damage, the odds are enormous. Even if you do end up taking the weapon, your enemy will have pickaxed you at least three times, causing you to lose a lot of health. Just simply land at another spot or two floors beneath him. Other than pubs, if you've ever watched Tifu, he never goes for 50-50 landings unless he knows he's going to get there first. But then again, it's not 50-50, it's 100-0. If he's going to miss the landing, he knows where else he can land to get decent loot. That's why in our previous video we discussed how important it is to get to know your drop spots. The next factor is trade shots. When an enemy peaks, it's usually easy to predict where to pre-aim. That's why you don't want to let the enemy know where you're going to shoot from. The big mistake is people taking 50-50 AR bloom fights. Unless you've gotten most of the damage off firsthand, don't take the risk. Get a better angle or trick the opponent into losing track of you. So that's why these bloom fights are never worth it, ever. 9 out of 10 times, taking a 50-50 landing or a 50-50 bloom fight will result in you losing a lot of health. If you simply gave yourself better positioning or used buildings to confuse the enemy, it could have been avoided. So next time, don't take super risky drops or plays. I promise it will pay off. Alright guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys got something out of this video and that you keep your chin up as you keep trying to improve out there. If you like this video, make sure that you like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. You can also head over to ProGuys.com for lots more tips and tricks just like these. Keep your eyes peeled for more videos coming up every single day, and we will see you guys out there. Good luck with your Fortnite grind.